Hi and welcome to the Predead Central YouTube channel. In this video we will discuss the key points of hypertension, what it is, its classifications and the major groups of drugs used in its management. So what is it? Well it's a condition in which a patient's blood pressure is higher than normal. A diagnosis of hypertension is made when a patient's blood pressure is consistently above 140 over 90. A lot of information and details about the stages and diagnosis of hypertension are clearly laid out in section 2.5 of the BNF. It's nicely laid out and easy to read and also refers you to the latest NICE guidelines of hypertension. As pre-ed students, you need to be aware of the contributing factors which can increase a patient's risk for hypertension. Some of these factors include family history, obesity, and age. Another key point is that it can be classified into various stages, for instance stage 1, stage 2 as well as severe hypertension. These can be seen from the slides. First line recommendations for all patients when it comes to managing hypertension should be healthy lifestyle changes. This is essential. Some examples of this can include stopping smoking, reducing alcohol intake, as well as eating healthily. Moving on to the pharmacological management of hypertension. There's a whole range of different medicines listed in the BNF which are licensed to treat hypertension. For the purpose of this video, however, we will only discuss a few of the major drug groups. Firstly, we will discuss ACE inhibitors. Examples of ACE inhibitors include enalapril, ramipril and captopril. These drugs basically prevent the formation of angiotensin II, which ultimately cause vasodilation and thus lower blood pressure. Common side effects that you need to be aware of are a consistent dry cough, which is due to bradykinin accumulation, and if this occurs, patients can be prescribed the angiotensin receptor blockers. Also, when starting an ACE inhibitor, the first dose may cause profound hypotension, and so patients should be advised to take the first dose at night whilst sitting down. Another side effect is hyperkalemia, which is an increase in potassium. Hence, special attention should be, pay should be paid to the patient's drug chart in case they are on other medicines which can also cause hyperkalemia, such as potassium sparing diuretics. Lastly, these drugs should also be avoided in pregnancy. The second class of drugs which we will discuss are the beta blockers. These block the sympathetic pathway and thus reduce cardiac output, resulting in a lower blood pressure. These drugs end with lol, for example, bisoprolol, atenolol and propranolol. Some of the beta blockers are cardioselective, such as atenolol and bisoprolol. And what this means is, is that they will be more selective for the beta-1 adrenoceptors, causing less side effects. However, they may lose their selectivity at higher doses. A key point from the BNF that you should be aware of is that some beta blockers such as atenolol and seliprolol as well as others are the most water soluble hence they are less likely to pass the blood brain barrier and enter the brain ultimately causing less nightmares and sleep disturbances compared with other beta blockers. Beta blockers are contraindicated in patients with second or third degree heart block they can also trigger bronchoconstriction and should usually be avoided in patients with a history of asthma. You should also be aware of the common side effects of beta blockers such as fatigue, cold extremities as well as being able to mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia. Finally, according to the BNF, the only beta blocker which is thought to be safe during pregnancy is labetalol. Well, that's it for this video. However, in our next week's video, we will finish off this topic by discussing calcium channel blockers as well as diuretics.